Good morning to the lovely jurors and good morning to one and all present here. I am architect Nikhil Marcus and I am going to be presenting on behalf of architect Harish because he couldn't come today. He was the one who's there on the site. All right. Uh, the project that I'm going to be explaining today, uh, it's called Altitude. So just like the name suggests, Altitude basically sits on a higher altitude, which is around 4,500 feet above the sea level. It is located in this place called Vyanard, uh, which is one of the northernmost districts of Kerala, for those of you who don't know. So I'm sure like everybody who's sitting here, uh, when they hear the name Vyanard, you know, a certain set of impressions, images pops into your head, which is obviously a lot of animals, a lot of, you know, uh, mountains and hills and, you know, uh, tea plantations and coffee plantations and things like that. Basically everything that's very uh, naturesque. Fortunately, we also had a site which kind of offered a lot of uh, beautiful uh, views from on all the sites. And it was very important that we make use of these views. So it was basically an 800-acre uh, property which is owned by the same client. And uh, there was an 8-kilometer off-roading experience, which is a really beautiful experience, but then not so comfortable one, to reach the top of the site where our project is located. So the whole idea of altitude you know, it kind of started uh, from a conversation between our partner and CEO, architect George Simon, and the client, Mr. Rashik Tahir, over a cup of coffee, maybe like a few years back. So the idea was to have a weekend home where, you know, uh, his friends and family could come over and sit and relax and unwind. Because, you know, um, these people lead a very chaotic life and then they wanted to come to Wynard, you know, away from the hustle and bustle of the city to relax themselves. So uh, one of the key requirements of the client was that he wanted a very minimalistic, uh, out-of-the-box, unique thing. He didn't want a traditional Kerala-style architecture, you know, building there. Uh, so this is a, um, you know, just like the uh, corporate office we designed for him like 10 years back, uh, a not-so-conventional uh, office at that time. So uh, stressing on the client requirement, he didn't want a traditional house. So that kind of led to the first challenge uh, that we had because uh, you know, in Sabati, we actually talk a lot about the context. Everything we do is very contextual. It's like a marriage between the traditional uh, narratives and, and the contemporary architecture. So uh, these are some of the houses we normally do in Kerala uh, in the last, you know, six or seven years. Uh, so to break away from that, you know, what exactly is context? Contextuality was the question. So we normally, uh, you know, contextuality can be talked in terms of the materiality, the, the, the vernacular aspect, the building form and all those things. But it also reminded us of the fact that, you know, it also means that we study the site properly and taking whatever that you get from the site, uh, if there is any view, if there is any existing things, structure there, uh, you know, taking care of all that is also part of the contextuality is what we feel. So there was a building or existing there, it was a dilapidated one. So it was very important that we use the same footprint because the existing building kind of created a bald spot there. So um, we thought we shouldn't invade into any of the other part of the, of the estate, even though we had like 800 acres of land. And then, like I said, there was a beautiful uh, view on all the sites. It was very important that we make the, the plan as porous as possible uh, in order to enjoy the views, just like the way the client wants. These people are coming here for the nature. So it was very important that we show them nature. And you know, transportation, the logistics part, again, was a problem because of that eight kilometer off-roading journey that I said. Only a, a truck of certain size could actually come there. So that's when the idea of uh, you know, um, prefabricated structure actually came up. So all these were pre-engineered uh, steel sections with you know, a gap in the center, which kind of acted like uh, you know, arteries of the building where you can take all the, all the services and everything. And all these were again uh, cut into a certain length so that it can be uh, taken up from that, I mean, in the, in the trucks. So talking about the design development, we had a massing, we had views all around, so it was very important that we make the ground flow as porous as possible because we wanted uh, you know, each space to look out into all the distant hills and mountains on all the sides. Uh, we pushed the first floor a little bit outside so that it kind of, uh, created a, a protection for the ground floor, the, the balconies. And again, they also had views towards the beautiful hills. We actually tried a normal, you know, pitched roof, traditional pitched roof initially, but then we could uh, figure out that, you know, it was hindering the views uh, of, the, of the hills. So that's when the idea of inverted roof came in. And then finally, uh, we introduced the, the, the wall in the center, I mean, in the front, the screen, so that's the only uh, you know, demarcation from the outside and the inside. 
So that's basically um, the story of Altitude uh, in a nutshell. So I'll just uh, quickly explain the plan. So this is the ground floor plan. And this over here is the is a, a wall, the screen wall that I was talking about. It also acts like a, a retaining wall for the swimming pool on the inside. These are some of the views. And then we have a swimming pool on the west. And again, so that's where the site actually slopes down. So it kind of, you know, uh, cantilevers. And then we have a beautiful view of, of the sun there. And this is the place where the client actually, uh, client and his friends usually spends most of their time. And then we, when, once you enter, uh, we have the dining and the living. Again, all the three sides are open because these people are coming there for the for the view. So we have actually given a very uh, provided a very muted uh, you know palette, a very subtle palette, and uh, we I mean so that we can highlight what is on the outside. And sometimes you know the it's interesting to know that certain times when we go there, actually when we went for the shoot also at six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning, you know the mist actually flows through the space. So it's really surreal and magical at times. And then we have a, a, a bedroom there, one bedroom there, again with a view, a toilet in the front, it creates a vestibule and the sleeping area with you know view on both sides. And then this is the staircase core. So like I said, since the material palette is very subtle, uh, we thought that you know there has to be like at least one element in the house that kind of pops out. So uh, that's so we thought you know staircase core can be that one element. These are some of the views. And then once you go to the top, we basically have two bedrooms there. This is the guest bedroom. Again, it's a very simple plan with you know uh, opening up views to all the sides. And then we have the, the master bedroom. So it's interesting to see that we have provided a, a glass on the top above the beam. That, so that there is a sense of, you know, that the roof is actually seen uh, from the inside. So we felt, you know, if you're doing something crazy with the roof, that profile, if they can see it from the inside, that would be nice. At the same time, it also, uh, you know, gives a view of the unhindered views of, of the hills that's happening there on top on the other side. Like, you know, like you can see here. So this is a section. You can see uh, how the, uh, the plot, I mean, the product is located, how the, blo uh, the, the block is located. Yeah, so that is all. I have a small video. Our association with Ashik has not been just this project. We've started off with a project uh, a while back for his corporate office. Um, he's one of those few clients who've always been very passionate about uh, the projects he's part of. He loves to see every fine details of it. There is a certain amount of belief that Ashik has with us. And uh, I guess that's, that, that does not stop with just belief because it, it's more of a responsibility for us as well. It probably started off with just one project initially, but then that continued. I think that relationship has just continued in, into this project right now. Uh, this is definitely one of our um, top favorite projects that uh, uh, we've we've done so far and it's taken a while to build it because there's a lot of hard work there's a lot of passion there's a lot of research there's a lot of travel there's a lot of conversation which I've had um, to reach uh, where it is right now and interestingly with Ashik this does not uh, stop here and we've, we've this I think is just the, the beginning of uh, the more to come this is the road that I was talking about the off-roading experience where the plot is located. You can see that we have beautiful views on all the sides.
conclude that altitude is basically a solution to a lot of problems that we faced uh, during the design process and also uh, respecting the priorities of the client and you know delivering something that reflects his lifestyle thank you so much thank you all for the time excellent project and uh, we had a very tough journey up those 8 kilometers yeah. i mean i must have aged for by a few years traveling on that road seriously uh, and the vehicle was not your green porsche though <laughs> very mean to the jury i don't know <laughs> but do you know <laughs> do you know what because of that journey when we entered through the wall let me describe that um entered through the wall which is strategically very well located positioned um you see on your left side of course you are driven towards it you see on the left side this beautiful vanishing pool into the yeah uh, into the entire vineyard uh, nature yeah. it's just took my breath away and uh, what came of course you rationalized then thereafter i mean you have a yellow jaisalmer stone, stone as yeah. which is the most memorable and the most unique water body or a pool i have seen so my Thank compliments you. for that Thank you little so much. warm tone especially with this bluish and uh, yeah light blue grayish hills of vineyard you place a yellow a yellow pool it's fantastic mentioned that we arrived during sunset so the pool actually reflected yes the yeah we were actually so happy that you guys reached there at that time <laughs> i know that That's that was one of the happy disguise. accidents of that trip we had some unhappy ones but that was perfect timing because the pool uh the you know because the yellow is actually very subtle the water actually yeah, takes yeah. over so it really felt like the whole thing was like that golden light of the sky just Yeah, came into yeah. the pool and it's just one of those like chef's kiss kind of like details that as architects after a very tiring day just felt actually so invigorated um yeah but sorry yeah no 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 sorry no no we can have a conversation here um and then you know i was tempted to walk into the pool and you have provided that also you have a little yeah. uh, where the the uh, i don't know shallow it's a shallow portion, portion yeah. connects yeah. you have that and i'm walking there and yeah. somebody took a shot and it looked like jesus walking on, walking on water, on water. <laughs> it looked like that fortunately i didn't slip so you have provided even and i think that speaks through the entire project each and everything has been so carefully crafted so carefully put in place without the opulence that you would normally expect i think it is defining the whole building besides its setting and the architecture and the construction all that i will oversee uh, because it's very well done it is defining actually the interiors are defining a new quality of luxury um with a certain modesty of course the 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 bathtub is there and so on yeah. uh, the beds the the table furniture and lighting all very expensive but within this expensiveness there is a kind of subtleness also and uh, i loved that i loved the strategies the only observation and we are unanimously sharing that for some strange reason and now i understand where it came from from your showroom this vertical application of the stone with the edges chipped off like a denim i mean like a denim trouser or so very fashionable that was our joint observation then later while exiting i had another observation your building at the approach is completely um uh, completely symmetrical with these two um two roof structures the stake the steps on the right side go up on the left side there's not even a landing there's nothing that balances it it's a small thing that i observed okay. it's nothing significant but there's a lack of balance there at the entrance so the stone wall and these these entrance area they miss out on the refinement that we otherwise see through the entire uh, building and building interiors there's actually a, a small story you know regarding the front wall uh, so initially we had actually proposed an 
regular normal natural stone a typical stone but then the client wanted something fancy there so it was very hard to convince him and finally what we did is we told him that we'll get a regular stone from a local vendor there and we got some laborers and we asked them to chip the edges so that it looks like it's stitched you know so that was kind of the concept so that you know all these stones are kind of stitched there and that is the thing that we kind of convinced and then he said okay with it or else you know we would have been uh, gone with a much worse stone there so i think um, I mean, it's a win-win situation for both of us. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've all, all projects have this struggle and I guess like the client collaboration has been a key to this. Yeah. But there are always like these places where someone wins and someone loses. But this was actually unanimous for us, actually. Uh, for me, like my mom's family is from coffee estates, so right. so for for me the whole ride up was actually quite invigorating, like very nostalgic. Right. But but in the flip side, that entry to the house, no, like from the point where you see the driveway to that wall and the staircase was actually the weakest link to it because you really have to enter the gate and then again feel that that first. I'm not talking about the architecture, but how. It sort of sits on the ground, that last part, you know, you draw the line at the top of the uh, wall and then down, down, down to the driveway is really like, uh, given how in some cases like the detailing actually reaches sublime levels, that last part, and, and there's another aspect of balance because the roof almost looks like it's about to fly away. Yeah. So there's a lightness to it. In that case, especially given the nature of the site, how it sits on the ground becomes actually something crucial. Right. So that became, I think, for all of us, a little like uh, what happened here while apart. But of course, as Viren said, as soon as we entered into this very, which I really love, this very discreet gate, and you you don't really know what to expect at the eye level because you see the roof yeah. and yeah. the placement of the pool and all of it was so nicely done and. And a couple of points, you know, which I'll just draw out from it from a broader discussion perspective. We've had so much, and there is the thrust now on architecture, do it fast. Mm -hmm. And we've spoken about like sometimes self-choices that, you know, we did it in this much time, this much time. And I heard from, you know, Harish that it actually took a while to do the site. Yeah, yeah. And in some cases, you know, firms can actually lose track of the project. What was really nice that in the long time, you could see that slow cooking process of, really the building sitting so beautifully on the side that the relationship of every tree with every opening, one can see someone sat, stood there and figured this is how you frame it. And, and that, I mean, again, I, would, I, I really love this about the process, uh, given all its challenges, because it, it takes time and it takes energy to go visit the sites. But I feel this project, while it generates really lovely photographs, almost doesn't do justice to yeah, how it sits on site because you know the the general tendency to see the project and is almost like it feels like one of those like form projects which is beautiful but you really feel like in Vyanard you know maybe it works maybe it doesn't but it sits beautifully on site like when you're in a room you realize that the canopy the vistas are all thought of yeah. and that's really lovely to experience and I, th I think for me the broader discussion we've discussed roofscapes and homogeneity and especially in the heritage of architecture that we've seen from the modernist era, et cetera, et cetera, there is a tendency of like having a certain form as a gesture. Yeah. And all buildings have individuality. Even if you go to a heritage settlement, all buildings have individuality. But ego becomes a question mark thing. And you know where you choose to blend and where you choose to make a gesture is a very sensitive decision. And once, once you make the decision, you have to carry it through. What was nice about this project is when you see the photographs, you feel a little suspicious. But when you visit the site, you realize that you know, the practice has carried it through. So it was really like after a really long day, quite a perfect end to the session for us. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for the time.